Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, I'm gonna dig deep into some role level security. Stay tuned. Okay, so role level security, there's lots of videos and blog posts. Adam even did one on it, right? So why, why are you doing it? Well, Adam and I ran into a little challenge and we came up with a couple of ways to solve this. And you guys know with Power BI, there's probably a gazillion ways, a gazillion, a lots of ways to solve the exact same problem. And so I want to put this video out there because I'm curious on how you guys solved this problem or did you run into it, right? So if you have any ways that you've run into this, post it in the comments below. The scenario was, Mm, well, the best way for me to explain is to what? Head over to my laptop. Okay, check out this data model. So it's pretty straightforward. I have, you know, my internet sales table, I have a customer table, sales territory table, and my date table, and a product table. And on my sales territory table, I actually have, take a peek, take a peek, look at this. Check out my sales territory table, and I have a username. Now, you're gonna see me use a scalar function called username throughout this video. That's because the customer I was working with, they're doing embedding. They're embedding their Power BI into their own application. If you're using PowerBI.com and email addresses, you wanna use user principal name, the scalar function user principal name instead of username, okay? Just wanna put that out there. If you're using embedded and you're not using email address, you have your own custom way of users authenticating into your application, use username because you can pass in what they are authenticating with and use that in your role level security. All right, all right, let's head back to my laptop. Okay, so that's what we have here, right? I have, you know, Patrick owns the United States and Adam is more of an international type of guy, right? He is more of an international. I like to stay right here in my little country. Okay, all right, so I have this table. And basically what I wanna do, the first thing they said was, Patrick, we need role level security because we want Patrick to see this and Adam to see that. But I said, ah, piece of cake. So I'm gonna manage roles, easy, easy peasy create a role, we're gonna call it security, right? And what we're gonna do is go to my sales territory and say username equals username. Check it, easy, bam, right? So then I really like the desktop, desktop because it allows me to check it out before I actually deploy it. So I'm gonna go ahead and say view as role, and say do this, Patrick and security and click OK, don't fail me now. And notice everything is filtered out to just United States, what I have access to. The five regions in the United States, my slicer is only set to the United States, and hey, I'm logged in as Patrick, right? But check this out, and I only have 7,819 customers. But if I click, so when I click this customer, pretty cool, right? They were like, oh, Patrick, you are so, 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 so smart. It was like a little bit, right? Then they click this one, it's like, it's great. But then they click on Aaron Allen and they got nothing. Like, why Why doesn't Aaron Allen show anything? I was like, well, he may or may not be your customer. That may, That's maybe Adam's customer. And they go, whoa, stop the presses, Patrick. Stop, 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 stop. When the one customer signs in, when one of our clients sign in, we don't want them to see the other client's customers and vice versa. I was like, oh. How do you figure that out? How do you stop that? So I got to thinking, right? My brain got to churn in. And they go, especially when we use a slicer, we don't want things to show up blank like this. It was like, okay, okay guys, I get it, I get it. So Adam and I chatted. We actually talked to our friend Marco. What's up, Marco? Thank you so much for giving us, helping us out with this problem. Um, and we came up with two different types of solutions. And let me show you what we did. Let me show you the first way, all right? So I'm gonna stop viewing. Stop viewing. The very first thing we did was we created a bridge table. And if you read documentation and stuff out there, there's lots of documentation out there that talks about the bridge table. And so basically in my bridge table, I have sales territory key and customer key, key T, <laughs> not drinking tea, every possible combination of sales territory and customer. But what I also did was based on the sales territory, I added the username to this table. Okay, and you'll see why in just a little bit. And so once I have that done, I'm gonna go over here and create a relationship between sales bridge customer and the customer key, right? And it automatically turns it on for bi-directional filtering 
But what you also have to do is go and check the box labeled apply security filter in both directions. So I was a little apprehensive about using this bi-directional filtering, especially after field, uh, attending Marco's class on DAX, mastering DAX. I was really, really hesitant. Um, but after I talked to him, you know, he said, hey, Patrick, you know, this is not bad because using the breeze table is very not that likely of introducing ambiguity, right? And we'll, we'll have another video talking about um, ambiguity with your bi-directional filters. But go ahead and follow this and click OK, right? And it works. There you go. So I got my, my relationship set up, bi-directional. Be sure to check that box. And then I came back to my manage roles. Check this out. Let's see how hard this was. I actually repeated the exact same DAX expression. Click, check, make sure I check it. Click OK. Click Save. All right. Now, let's go back here. You guys remember Aaron Allen, right? I'm going to sign back in as Patrick. I'm going to simulate. I'm going to act like I'm Patrick here. I am really Patrick. Um, security. Let's see if old Allen, Aaron Allen disappears. Click OK. Boom. Aaron Allen is gone. And as I click through my list there, you'll see how Right. Every customer I select in that list is associated to the United States, is associated to this guy right here, Patrick. Not this guy, right? Not this guy, but right, the client. Okay. All right. Great. I was like, okay, Marco, Adam, which one should we use? And they were like, well, which one performs better? All right. And so Marco did say, he did say that the bi-directional one would perform better, but you know, right? I, you know, I gotta see, I gotta see, I gotta make sure which one performs better. So using um, DAC Studio, I was able to get some metrics on this one. And then I came up with a different approach. So I'm gonna stop viewing and I come over here. And what I'm gonna do is, let me see, manage my roles. I'm gonna clear this filter out. Let me clear this filter out. Do that. And then I'm gonna delete this relationship. It's like, Patrick, you are crazy. You just went through all that work. Why would you delete it? I was like, cause I wanna test something. I wanna see if something else would work. So if you guys have been working with SSAS, you know, especially tablet models when they first came out, there's a great, there was a great article written in the docs.microsoft and lots of other people wrote about it using a lookup value. I um, mean, it, it didn't require a relationship because you can um, establish that relationship using the lookup value. Not gonna go into all the details about lookup value. Go look it up. It's just do a quick Bing search and you'll find the answer. But I have some code here um, that I've written. And so we're gonna go back to manage roles. And we're gonna add um, one here on my uh, customer table. Add filter customer key, right? And it's just a little code where I'm doing a lookup, I'm finding the customer key. It's like writing a join in T-SQL. It'll say, give me the customer key, join on username, username, customer key, customer key, right? And it returns any, um, Turns it returns those customer keys. And then what I'm also gonna do is say add a filter to hide all my roles in this table. Cause I don't want anybody messing with this table, right? Click save. Let's see if this works. Let's see if the behavior works. So we're gonna go here, view us filters. So let's see Aaron Adams, hang on one second. Let's make sure. So Adam had a few, so we're gonna log in as Adam this time. Let's make sure these two guys disappear. So we're gonna do view as roles. And I'm gonna use Adam this time. Security, click okay. Give it a little bit to think. So it seems a little slower than the bi-directional. It really does, right? So Aaron Allen was the first one. That one, you can see I'm signing in as Adam. Behavior is the same. After look, using DAX Studio, I did realize that this method is a little slower than bi-directional filtering, but completely up to you, completely up to your volumes of data. You know, I'm just curious, how are you guys, how do you, have you ran into this problem before? How are you solving this problem? You know, post it where? In the comments below. If it's a really cool solution, I'll reach out to you, probably do a video on it, give you a big shout out. What do you guys think? Again, post some comments, give me some ideas, some thoughts, right? Looking for other ways to do this. If you've done it other ways, maybe this is your first time seeing it. If this is your first time visiting the Guy in the Cube channel, what do you gotta do? Be sure to subscribe, right? If you like my video, big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and Patrick, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.